Location targeting is one of the main elements when setting up your campaign. There's a variety of ways that we can target users as well as exclude certain users depending on where they are. We can go as high as the country level all the way down to specific zip codes or potentially radius targeting. So I'm going to go over how that setting actually works and there's a few different ways that location setting actually works. Now if you have a ton of different locations, there is a template which we're going to share and it is from Google on how you can bulk add a lot of different locations at the same time. It is a lot easier than trying to do this manually. One thing that we can also do after your campaigns are running is bid differently by those locations depending on what you have set up within your campaign settings. So we're also going to cover that. And then finally, if you have a brick and mortar location or several of them actually, or you're a chain and you want to be able to target just around those certain areas, I'm going to show you how you can create location groups. And these are for any campaigns that want to use location extensions or affiliate location extensions. So let's begin about location targeting. I'm already partway through the campaign setup process. So I've already selected my campaign goal and I've chosen all that. And now I'm in the general settings portion. Just scrolling down a little bit, we get to the first option in targeting and audiences and that is our location targeting. Now there are a variety of levels that we can target geographical locations. We can go as broad and high level as targeting as we have right here, all countries and territories, everywhere, across the globe. But we can also get specific as going down to targeting a radius around a specific location. So first I just wanna run through each of the levels. Now I am located in the United States, so you see these are my default options. As I already said, we have all countries and territories, but some of the other popular options in my location could be targeting the United States and Canada, because they're so close and border each other. If you wanna get even more specific, I can stick just to the United States, now going down to one country level. And the next step when we get a little bit more specific is I can choose to enter another location. So even though I am in the United States, I do have the option to choose a totally different country. And one thing that's interesting of when you select different countries, if you look down a little bit into the languages section, Google's saying, hey, based on your targeted locations, you may also want to target these languages. You may have noticed that when I had the United States and Canada location option chosen, that they also recommended I targeted the language settings of French. Now the language is going to be determined of what the user's browser settings are. But what we've seen in a few accounts is that even though we're targeting multiple languages, sometimes people might have their browser setting as a different language than English. But if your keywords are still in English and people are still typing in those specific keywords, it could be a good way to help expand your reach to different locations, but also trying to maintain the intent that you were trying to do with your specific language keywords. X out of country, but we can also get down to specific regions, maybe depending on your shipping or the reach of your company and the brand away awareness, or potentially there's a specific campaign that only targets a few different areas or regions within a specific country. In this case, I'm just pretending West Coast here. You can choose to target just specific regions. Xing out of all of these, you can start typing in specific city names and you may get a few different results here. I just typed in Las Vegas and there's a variety of options that we get. Of course, Nevada is gonna be the most popular option, but there are other options that we can get. I had the city in mind, but you see the first option is the DMA region. DMA stands for Designated Market Area. So this is gonna cover not only the actual city of Las Vegas, but a lot of the cities and counties surrounding the Las Vegas city area. Below the Las Vegas DMA option, we have the option to just target the actual city. And if we look at the difference in reach, we're at 4.86 million for the whole DMA region compared to 1.08 million just for the city. That's a big difference. I chose this specific city example for another reason because some examples, and Las Vegas is a good one, you may just get a certain portion of that city, a specific neighborhood within that city. And here's a perfect example. I can target just the Las Vegas Strip, just the main popular area of the city itself. And I have actually done that with a couple clients. It's pretty fun. But if I want to target just that specific neighborhood, we see the reach is only 361,000. I'm going to delete this option because yes, we can get down to certain cities and neighborhoods, but we also can get down to specific zip codes. So these are two zip codes in the Seattle, Washington area. And maybe your business only serves or you only want to advertise in these two zip codes instead of targeting the entire city of Seattle, Washington, because that combined reach will be just under 700,000 users compared to 8.89 million of the DMA region compared to 6.94 million of the city. Here's a different option that we haven't seen yet. I can target the Seattle airport or just the specific Seattle downtown neighborhood, and that's gonna be 759,000. So we can get pretty specific on what we wanna target, but we're not done yet. There is another option I wanna show you of how we can target users. And this one's really gonna be applicable to if you're a local business and your customers or the area you serve are all within a certain radius around your business. So because I said radius, we're gonna look at radius targeting. To do that, you need to 
click on the advanced search option and then switch the location option over to radius. You can start searching for specific names and there we're seeing actual business names if that's applicable. I'm gonna delete that one. You can type in coordinates, which I have never done, but that is an option if you know the exact map coordinates of your location or you can just paste in the address. They're giving me multiple options here, but it is the same thing. And now I'm telling Google, target my ads to anyone within this 20 mile radius. There's a big asterisk there and we're gonna get to that soon. It's not necessarily everyone in this 20 mile radius. And if I feel that 20 miles is too large, I just have to hover over my targeted location. You'll see the little pencil icon. We can click it so we can edit it. Now I can change the mile radius from 20 miles down to one mile. And just for a lot of people outside the US, you do have the option to change that to kilometers. But now I'm gonna click save. And now this specific campaign can target users within one mile of my business location. And we can see my business is probably somewhere around here, right in the middle. That's exactly where my location is gonna be. Now we can get very specific on the targeting options that we have. We just went over radius targeting as well as zip code targeting. Well, what if you wanna keep that specificity, but you also wanna target a bunch of different locations? Well, we can do bulk targeting. Let me back out a little bit and we can show you. Let's say you have a list of zip codes that you already wanna target. If I tried to paste them all in right here, it's not gonna work. So we have to go back into advanced search. The location option that we just skipped to do radius targeting, we can click the add locations in bulk. And you can do your multiple cities, postal codes, countries, one location per line. So here's where I'm gonna paste all of these zip codes. And then I can click search. Well, the list I got online wasn't the greatest because two out of the 32 locations could not be found. For the rest of them, I can choose to target all of them. I can click save. And now my campaign is gonna target just people within these specific zip codes. Now, when you're doing the bulk adding for specific cities, potentially counties, DMA regions, whatever you wanna target, that review process to see which ones you wanna include is gonna be very important. Because as we saw with Las Vegas, as well as Seattle, sometimes just typing in one city name can trigger multiple neighborhoods or regions cities in different states. So whenever you're bulk adding, you still wanna confirm that you're adding all the right options instead of just massively clicking target all like I just did with the zip codes. Now, all the targeting options I went through, targeting by country, region, neighborhoods, DMAs, zip codes, radius targeting, all of those options can also be used to add exclusions. So I just wiped out that last option. Many clients that I have worked with in the past just wanna target their ads in this country, in the United States. But there are two states, Hawaii and Alaska, that are pretty far away from the mainland USA. So many previous clients really don't offer shipping there or don't do business in Hawaii and Alaska just because the nature of their business is not feasible with trying to do business in Hawaii or Alaska. So to try and make sure our ads do not show up in either of those states, we could just type them in and instead of targeting them, we can exclude them. Yes, I could just bulk add the other 48 states as my targeting options, but this could be an easier thing to do. Just have the entire country and just exclude the two states or regions within that country that I don't want to target. Now, when I was going through the radius targeting, kind of made up a point to say I want to try to reach people who are presumably within this area that I'm setting up within my location targeting. And I want to clarify what I meant by that statement, because if we go down to location options, we get a deeper sense of how location targeting will work within this specific campaign. The default option in every new campaign that you set up is going to be to target people in or who show interest in your targeting locations. Users who are in the actual location are determined by a couple ways from Google Ads. It could be the IP address and where that IP address location lives, being connected to a specific Wi-Fi network, wherever that network is determined to be the physical location, that's gonna affect the location targeting. And then looking at the user's device location settings. Again, Wi-Fi, but then there's also GPS, Bluetooth, and a few other factors that's gonna determine where that user potentially actually is at that moment. Now, for people who have shown interest in a location, this is a broader approach, and it goes exactly with what I was saying. It's You're not necessarily targeting people who are just in your location, because showing an interest means they have used search terms within the keywords they're typing into Google that specify a specific location that's possibly not in the area that you're actually targeting. If their search history has shown a lot of searches within a specific region, let's say I've done a lot of searches that include the name Seattle or Seattle locations, but I'm in Wisconsin. Potentially someone targeting Seattle can still have their ad shown to me just because I've shown interest within that area. I have also been to Seattle multiple times. I have done searches on Google Maps 
and I've created maps of places I wanted to visit about Seattle. So I have shown a lot of interest within that area in the past. I could see that person's ads even though I'm not physically there. So the more specific option would be people who are in or regularly in, because that means at some point they're gonna be more physically within that location. Now this setting used to be a lot more specific in the past. You used to be able to target people who were just within that location. But a couple years ago, Google got sneaky and they changed this to include regularly in your targeted locations as well. So again, based on wherever that user has potentially searched from, if someone who travels a lot for work and they're in other locations frequently, they still could potentially market to that user just based on that user's past location history. And then depending on your industry, you may also just want to target people searching for your targeted locations. Michelle can vouch for me, I am a massive planner. I will pull up Google Maps, I'll pull up Google, and I will research a bunch of different places before I ever travel anywhere. So I frequent Chicago a lot. So when I go down to Chicago, I'll search for something like Chicago Brewery. Chicago pizza place. I am planning ahead of time. Well, if you're in an industry where you know a lot of tourists or outsiders come in, you can capitalize on people being proactive. People like me. Because if someone's planning on going to a pizza place in Chicago and you're a Chicago pizza place, you can still promote to that user ahead of time. This is going to be based on the keywords they're typing into Google. Maybe you are just targeting pizza place as a keyword, but that user actually doing the searching is adding qualifiers like Chicago, downtown Chicago, etc. Even though they may not be in that location, you can still capitalize on that user's interest to advertise for them, build that awareness, and hopefully they choose you when they eventually do come to that location. Now the exclusion options we get in the advanced setting are more specific. So right now, I'm excluding Alaska and Hawaii, so I'm flat out telling Google, people in these locations, do not show them my ads. If I wanna loosen the reins on my exclusions, turn it into a little bit of a gray area, you could change your exclusions to be people who are in or show interest within your excluded locations. But pretty much on my end, for the most part, I've always left that exclusion setting as the recommended option. After all that, I do want to clarify, if you are running hotel ad campaigns, you can only target and exclude by country or territory only. So if those are the types of campaigns you really want to run, I'm sorry if I got your hopes up. Now, I want to talk about location groups. And location groups aren't going to be applicable to every account really focused on specific location targeting options. This feature is only available for any account running location extensions or affiliate location extensions. I am already in the location group section within Google Ads, but to find it yourself, go up to Tools, and then you will see it's under your shared library location groups. Google does mention in their support sections that sometimes common chain businesses are included. In my experience, I have only seen this pop up in the accounts if I have Google My Business accounts and locations connected to my Google Ads account. This account already has a location group created and it's lumped all four of their locations within one. Completely understand that there are a lot of other business right there that have way more locations than four. So if you want to divvy up and start grouping up some of your locations for your extensions, click on the blue button. I have these locations blurred out, but some of them are duplicates. So if I select on a few of them, I just want to group these two together. These two locations are fairly close to each other. They use the same landing pages. So I just want to group these two out of the four together. Now I can click save. And now I have a new location group. Now I'm going to jump into the ad extension area of Google ads. And I'm already in the portion of where I can create a new location extension. The default option is to automatically target my location extensions by all of the synced locations. But since I just created a location group, I can choose to only have these location extensions show up just for a specific group. And now I've targeted my location extension just by the new location group I have created. You can see down below, right where my mouse arrow is, that you can add new location groups while you're building the extension. And for whatever reason, if you have new locations for your business that are opening, or if you have the unfortunate situation where some locations have closed, you can go back into the location group settings within your tools and shared library, and you can edit any pre-existing location group to either add or remove certain locations. Now within Google Ads, I'm switching to the main locations report. Because after you launch your ads, give them some time to run, you can go to this report and see how that specific location is working for your campaigns. In this particular example, this campaign was broken out by our specific states or regions. Depending on how you were reviewing performance and whatever the campaign goals are, you can then set bid adjustments by those locations. You can choose to increase your bids or even decrease your bids to whatever percentage you think makes sense. You can't decrease a bid by 100%. You can only go up to 99. But if you're going to go that far up, you might as well just exclude that specific location from the campaign. 
And while states and regions are pretty specific, we know we can get deeper than that. So if you want to review performance, and potentially let's look at New York here, just because we see a high CPA right now, we can click on that option. And then Google gives us additional options of how we can narrow the data. In this case, I just want to look at cities. And right off the bat, we see the culprit. No surprise, all right? New York, New York is actually spending the most and not giving us anything in return. Since my actual campaign targeting is at the state level, I cannot add bid adjustments to this particular location. So if I'm not happy with performance of how New York, New York, the city is doing, I can then go back into my campaign settings and add this specific city as an exclusion if I want to do this. And the same thing can be done on the reverse side. For whatever reason, if you're seeing a city that's performing very well, or not even a city, a different location that's performing very well, that might give you the idea to consider breaking that location out into its own campaign so you can make sure it's getting all the budget and the attention possible. So we first broke it down to city, and we see New York, the state, or region is still the main option. But within the same view, I can break it down even further and choose some of the other different location targeting options that we can use. And then I can review performance by the postal code or zip code. There's performance broken down by neighborhood, and you can choose any of the other options that apply to you. It's important that we understand how location targeting actually works because it is a campaign only setting. So using the reports after the fact can help dictate if you want to update any of your bid adjustments, possibly add any more exclusions, or possibly even create more campaigns to make sure that each location gets the attention it deserves, or possibly just create more campaigns focused on those specific locations if they are performing very well. You now know how the targetings actually work and all the options that you have, and most importantly, how the advanced settings work. So as you're setting up your location targeting, you can actually get an idea of who can actually see these ads, because now we know it's not always gonna be based on the actual physical location of that user. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.